Oh, I'm so excited you're here today. Hope you're feeling the same way. I have been able to get out more because the weather's starting to be nicer and we've been walking around, riding around on our bikes. We've been running a little bit and we have gotten to see a lot of spring happening all around us. The leaves are starting to come out and flowers are starting to grow. And one of my favorite sounds of all is when it's starting to become nighttime and I can hear all the frogs outside making all their sounds. Have you heard that yet? Oh, I hope so. I hope you get to go out and you start to hear them. Besides all just the birds and all the kids outside laughing while they're playing, but I do love when I get to hear the frogs. Oh, that's my favorite sound at night. Now, one of the things that we are about to explore today not only have to do with frogs, here's the sign for frogs, but we are going to talk about the pond. Yes, have you been to the pond? There's usually what? Ducks and maybe some frogs and turtles and snakes and now all the butterflies and the birds. Oh, it is a fun season and I really hope that this coming week you're going to be able to get outside and explore and can you please make some pictures? Draw them, take pictures of them, do whatever you can and let's start making an album so you can always remember this very special time. You can make your own study science book that you explored and that you can write your memories down. Draw your pictures, take those pictures and put them in your book. And this way you'll have it forever and we can always look back and remember this special time that you went out exploring some of the things that I'm gonna tell you about. Well, you know the drill. Before we get to do any of that, we are gonna practice our letters and sounds. And it's so important because you're learning. I'm still learning. Are you kidding? But it's important because you're going to start putting all those letters and sounds together so that you can make a book by writing all your own words. And each letter that we know makes a certain sound. And in order for those letters to go together, we have to remember how it sounds to make a word. So let's see if you remember, I have my sign all ready, and probably you've been practicing and you already know this, but for all our friends who are just joining us, first of all, hi, I'm so glad that you're here. And second of all, we have been learning these letters. Now, this is how it goes. I'm going to say the letter, I'm going to name the picture, and then I'm going to say the sound that that letter makes when we say this picture name. Does that sound right? All right, well listen. So it would be like this. A, apple, a. Ah. Your turn. Hey, that's pretty good. Okay, so we're ready to do our alphabet. Are you ready? A, apple, a. Ah. B, bat, b. C, cat, k. D, dog, d. E, ed, e, f, fun, f, g, game, g, h, hat, h, i, itch, i, j, jug, j, k, kite, k, l, lamp, l, m, man, m, n, nut, n, o, octopus, a, p, pan, p, Q, U, Queen, Qu, R, Rat, Er, S, Snake, S, T, Top, T, U, Up, Uh, V, Van, V, W, Wind, W, X, Fox, X, Y, Yellow, Y, Z, Zebra, Z, the reason why I kept looking is because I remembered something. This week I saw a beautiful rainbow. Have you ever seen a rainbow outside? The colors were amazing! And the sun was shining brightly on one side and there were dark clouds on the other. That's how a rainbow comes about. 
but it was right after a little bit of a um, sprinkle or a little bit of light rain and the sun was so bright and I remember saying oh, that sun looks so bright and yellow is the color that we usually say the sun is and so I remembered that at that moment it was so beautiful well I'm so glad that you practice your letters and your alphabet with me and now we're gonna do it in sign language and let's see if you've been practicing if not you're gonna learn now because part of what I do is I tell you a lot of new words in sign language from Mickey Mickey is the one that I go to actually it's funny because I taught Mickey sign language when she was younger and now she's going to go to college, she is going to college, to become an American Sign Language Interpreter. And I've had her come on my show as well to teach us some more words and things that go past what I'm doing here. And if you ever wanted to keep learning with Mickey, go back and look for some of her videos. There'll be some more that are coming and also she will be ready to help teach some too. So talk to your mom and dad about that. Okay, so remember A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Nice job. We did it together. Good job, guys. Well, so I told you that I wanted to talk about the pond. Now, we mentioned some of the things that are in a pond, right? We said that we some, sometimes see frogs. So we put our hand like this under your chin and we just kick the legs out. Frog. Got it? Good. And let's see, turtle. Sometimes I see turtles too and swimming in the water with their little nose up out of the water to get some air. So remember they have their shell on their back and we just see their little head. Can you see it? There you go. Try it out. <laughs> Great, that's turtle. Isn't it cute? And let's see, ducks. Have you seen ducks? They're coming back. I'm starting to hear them and see them. So duck is, they have their bill, right? So you put it by the side of your mouth, like they're saying quack, 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 quack. And birds, lots of birds. See that? Bird. And, ooh, sometimes you see fish swimming in the water. You got that. We did fish before for something else. So those are quite a few things that we did today to learn about our animals that we see at the pond. But we also can go back and think of the butterflies and different things that we did that we can start to see in spring too because sometimes they'll be at the pond. I hope that they'll start to um, start to allow us to go back into exploring the ponds and all the different parks that it's time to do now that the weather is nicer. So why don't we do a little fun finger game that I had for five frisky frogs. Can you count them with me? One, two, three, four, five. They're so cute. There you go. <laughs> okay. So, five little frisky frogs hopping on the shore. One hopped into the pond, splash! And then there were four. One, two, three, four. Four frisky frogs climbing up the tree. One fell off them, boom! There were three. Three little frisky frogs bathing in the dew. One caught a sneezy cold, a, a, a chew. And then there were two, good. Two little frisky frogs sleeping in the sun. One slept the day away. 
And then there was one. One little pesky frog sitting on a stone. Let's call his four friends back. Yoo-hoo! So he won't be alone. So we had five and we took away one, two, three, four. And how many did that leave? One. But now we are calling back all of his friends. And so here they come. One. Two, three, four. So four friends just joined back with their one friend. How many do we have? Count them. Five, five frisky frogs all back together again. There they are. Bye friends, we'll see you later. <laughs> Uh, that's so funny. Okay, so let's do another little one. Okay, there was a little turtle. Do you remember how to do it? Put his shell on his back with his little head out. There it is. There was a little turtle that lived in a box. Can you make a box? He swam in a puddle and he climbed up some rocks. He snapped at a mosquito. He snapped at the flea. He snapped at the minnow. And he snapped at me. Ooh, don't let him get you. <laughs> he caught the mosquito. He caught the flea. He caught the minnow. But he didn't catch me. Make a proud face. <laughs> You have the cutest little face. Oh my goodness, wow. I'm so happy I got to know you because not only are you beautiful on the outside, but you are amazing, even more beautiful on the inside. And that's the perfect way to be. I'm so excited that you're joining us and you're getting to be part of our family of going on such learning adventures. And I have been hearing some great things and I'm so excited that um, I can be part of your life. So thank you for that. And I wanted to do one more song and it's with the itsy bitsy spider. Do you remember that one? Good, let's see if you can remember that. The little pollywog wriggled from its egg dreaming of the day when he would grow some legs Swimming in the pond and hiding under the mud. Oh, the little pollywog loves to munch on tasty bugs. Mmm. Now that the pollywog has grown into a frog. How do we do frog? Spends all the lazy day sunning on the bog. Hopping to and fro, still hiding near the mud, still swimming in the pond and munching tasty bugs. Uh, uh, I'm glad that he likes to eat bugs. Do you eat bugs? <laughs> oh, I hope not. You didn't say, no, 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 you didn't. I hope not. <laughs> well, I wanted to show you this. Look at this. Here I made a little picture of a frog in a pond. And here he is. Do you know what he's sitting on? A lily pond. Do you see it? Sometimes they have beautiful white flowers on them. Oh my goodness, the frog stole my tongue. Well, he's sitting here with the water and the different grasses and things. And I used to play a game about this. And I used to give all my friends a little net, a little net, not too big. And I used to put out flies, not real ones, just pretend ones. And here they are. I wanted to show you because you could do this too at home. So I went online and I found a very simple, simple, simple picture of a fly. Do you see it? And I made them pretty big and I cut out a whole bunch. And 
we used to play a little game and I would have everyone hold out their net and the flies would come flying around and they would see if they could catch it. And then we would go over to the frog and we would put them down all near him and we would count them all together. So like this, how many does the frog have now? Two, right. So you can play lots of math games with something like that too. You can add up all the flies and take them away. It's a really good fun way to keep practicing all your math skills because when we put all the flies together, we add them. That's called addition. And then as the frog would eat them, they would be taken away and that's called subtraction. So through a lot of fun, fun, fun games, we could practice those skills and we would be getting so much better all the time at all our math. So I think you guys can do that. We also had some fun things. I'm gonna give you some ideas and then you can also show this to your mom and dad that there's a great website. If someone wants to know where it is, I can tell them to practice tracing your letters. Those letters that we practiced at in the beginning, now you can trace them. This is a turtle. So see on the bottom? where all the letters are, you can practice tracing them. And then they also give you a special place right here for you to write your own letters. So you can do that and practice coloring in your picture of a turtle. And I also had a green frog. You can make it any color that you want by simply having your parents or whoever um, is with you that goes onto this website and you can tell them what color you'd like to make your frog. And then again, you can practice tracing and writing your own letters. Let's see, I found this one, which is a fish. And this one is that tadpole that I told you about. This is the way a frog starts. Can you believe it? Oh yeah. It definitely does. It starts out as a little egg and it goes into a tadpole without legs. And then it slowly starts growing its legs and loses its tail. And it turns into the frog. <laughs> and here's that duck. So this is great for you to practice handwriting. Try it. And also, what I did was I printed out a picture. And we talked about all the different frogs and we colored them all different colors. That's a fun thing that you can do. This one, we used our imaginations and we looked around for different things that we had in my classroom and we used our eyes to go and help us find things that were the color green. We found things like construction paper, green rice. We found green tissue paper. We found yarn. We found whatever we could find with our colors, uh, using our eyes to make our frog. You can do the same thing. Have someone choose a color and then go around looking for things of that color. You don't have to glue it on, but if I were to say to you, Let's make our frog yellow. Can you please go around the house and find something safely to bring to me and let's put it on the frog. I'm thinking right now, I have some bananas that are yellow. I could bring one banana and put it here with all the other yellow things. That's a fun idea, but make sure that you get permission to do that. Okay, thanks. Okay, this one I drew, this is my pond. And I asked everyone to think about what they would like to find in their pond. Some drew fish, some even drew a snake in there. And I think that's because I happen to say that I would wish that there wouldn't be any snakes in my pond, but they always did. So I forgot to tell you, snake in sign language is this. Can you do it? It's a fun one and a duck. You know what we did? This was a fun one too. We used a cotton ball and put paint on it 
and we dotted it all over the place and we made a nice yellow um, duck. You can also glue those cotton balls down that have yellow on them or whatever color that you can imagine, you can do. This is yours. And we did feathers, we painted using a feather. That's a different way, instead of using a paintbrush and using those fine motor skills of, those, of the pincer grasp, we used a feather and we painted, we dipped our feather in yellow paint and we painted on our duck and made it much bigger. And then we had a turtle <laughs> and we counted all, this, all the dots on his back and we started to paint them and we had to uh, play a game by rolling the dice to see how many should we paint. And if it came out with three on it, we would paint three. And then we had to roll the dice to see how many more we got to paint. That's fun. And it's using your math skills too. Okay, so let's get ready to read a story. Actually, I'm gonna have two for you right now. And one of them is about a goldfish because you can always find fish in some sort of pond. And sometimes if someone has their own um, pond, they put in these type of fish. So let's hear about it because this is gonna explain about fish and they're like most fish. Goldfish are not all gold. They may be black, red, white, or other colors. Do you have a fish? I used to have a goldfish when I was growing up. They're fun to watch because they do so many silly things and I love their mouth. Can you make the mouth of a fish? Let me see if I can still do it. I did it, can you? <laughs> it looks so funny. Oh. They may have spots, stripes, or other patterns. Their bodies are covered with scales. Hmm, not just the one I stand on in the morning. They actually have the scales that you can see if you look really close. Can you see it on here? If you go with someone like your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa, or an adult that you can trust online and look up for a picture, you can see them closer and maybe you might even have your own fish. Now you know what that's called on their outer body, the scales. Some goldfish have slim bodies and long slender tail fins. These fish can be fast swimmers. Here are their fins. Are you a fast swimmer? <laughs> Some goldfish have thick bodies and large rounded tail fins. These fish may not swim as fast. And that's okay because that's how they were made. They can practice and they can do the best they can do too. I'm not really a great swimmer. I can swim, but I don't really swim too fast. I guess I could practice and maybe keep trying. Sounds like a good thing. Goldfish breathe with gills. Gills take oxygen from the water. Did you know that there was oxygen in the water? Yeah. Now, what I'm breathing right now, what you're breathing while you're listening to our story is oxygen, but we can't just open our mouth underwater and take in all that, all that water looking for the little bit of oxygen that's in it. That's not helpful for us. That's not a good idea. But the fish can do it. So that's something that is very different than us. What do they have again? Gills, right? To keep goldfish, you need an aquarium or a tank. Be sure to keep the tank clean. Oh, everybody wants it until it's time to clean it, right? I hope if you have fish that you're helping clean your tank. Goldfish like to hide. Get your fish places to hide. Put rocks and plants and ornaments in your tank. 
That's because they like to take a break. Don't you like to take a break? Sometimes we even need to take a nap. <sighs> but they need to go under there to take a little break too. Just like in the pond. The pond, we can't see them all the time because there's things that they like to go in and hide under and have a safe place if anyone's chasing them. Goldfish cannot close their eyes. When they sleep, they sink down in the water and stay still. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, so it would be hard to tell. I guess if we saw them not moving, that could be that they're sleeping. So maybe we have to be really careful about tapping on the tank too. Hmm, I think it's pretty loud in there when we tap on the tank. We wouldn't want to scare them. We have to be respectful, take care of our pets. To keep your goldfish healthy, feed them fish food flakes. Feed them twice a day, but not too much. They'll get a bellyache. Look at his face. Can you see it? It was kind of doing that face that we were trying to make before. <laughs> In the back, they have something called a glossary, and it tells us new vocabulary words. The vocabulary words that they wanted us to remember were gills. That's an organ for taking oxygen from the water so that they can breathe. Ornaments. Ornaments, not the kind that I'm thinking you're thinking about. When I say ornaments, some of you might be thinking about a certain holiday that you get to put ornaments on a tree. Maybe, but that's not what we're talking about here. Ornaments are objects used to decorate, which could be on the tree. But in this case, they were using those things to what? Decorate, but inside of their aquarium, giving, giving them some place to hide, right? Oxygen. Oxygen is a gas in the air that people and animals breathe. We talked about that. And patterns. Patterns are designs or forms. I think you're doing really good at this. Well, now that we know how to help take care of goldfish and we learned a little bit more about how they breathe and what is on the outside is called their scales, right? And we now are going to hear a different story about the big wide mouth frog. Look at his face. He definitely does have a big wide mouth. <laughs> this was written by Anna Martin Laranga. Once there was a big wide mouth frog with the biggest widest mouth you ever did see. Do you think you can do better? Let me see. <laughs> I don't know. I think he might have us beat. And one day that big wide mouth frog hopped off to go see the world. There he goes. Bye. The first creature he had met had big thumping feet. Do you see that? What is that? Has a baby Joey. Ah, it's a kangaroo. Hey you, big thumping feet. Who are you and what do you eat? Shouted the wide mouthed frog. I'm a kangaroo, said kangaroo. And I eat grass. Well, I am a big wide mouthed frog shouted the wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. He looks really proud of that. The second creature he met had a big black nose. Koala bear. Remember that one? We did a fun song with that. Koala bear, koala bear, please stand up. Listen, Mr. Big Nose, who are you and what do you eat? Shouted the wide mouthed frog. Hmm, he's getting a little sassy. I'm a koala, said koala, and I eat leaves. Well, 
I'm a big wide mouth frog, shouted the wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. Hmm, look at him being a little sassy, just a little. Oh, the third creature he met was hanging upside down. Ho there, upside down creature. Who are you and what do you eat? shouted the wide mouth frog. I'm a possum, said possum, and I eat blossoms. Well, I'm a big wide mouth frog, shouted the wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. Hmm, look at him doing some fancy tricks over there. Oh boy. Ooh, the fourth creature he met had these long toes. Look here, three long toes. Who are you and what do you eat? shouted the wide mouth frog. I'm an emu, said emu, and I eat grasshoppers. Well, I'm a big wide mouth frog, shouted the wild wide mouth frog, and I eat flies. Uh-oh. He's looking a little nervous, don't you think? Maybe because Emu got so close. Maybe Emu's not really ready for his sassiness. Then Wide Mouth Fog met a creature stretched out on the riverbank like a knobby brown log. Hey, knobby brown log, who are you and what do you eat? shouted the Wide Mouth Frog. Look at him. <laughs> he better be careful. He's getting a little too confident of himself. Knobby Brown Log opened her mouth in a slow, wide smile. Good day to you too, she said. I'm a crocodile and I eat big, wide-mouthed frogs. Who are you and what do you eat? Me, whispered the big, wide-mouthed frog, puckering his mouth to be the smallest, narrowest mouth you ever did see. I'm just a small, narrow-mouthed frog, and I'm off! <laughs> he hopped away really quick. Oh no, he met his match. Look at him running away, hopping away, I should say. And look, I don't think you can see it, but Fly is laughing. Why? because he thought he was something extra, extra, extra special. And he was going around trying to make some other friends by maybe not always being the nicest. And guess what? He found someone who ate things like him. And so he was trying to make his mouth not look so wide. And then he took off. Well, that was fun. Well. I hope that you had a great day. I hope that you get to go and explore some ponds. And I really hope that you take this special time that you have with your family or, or maybe you have um, extended family staying with you and you use that time to go and explore together, talk about what you see, use these new skills that you have about writing and um, drawing and make your own exploring notebook of a pond. Draw things that you've seen. Then you can always have this memory and go back and maybe one day you are going to make your own stories and you'll be here reading them to new friends like I am. Well, I hope that you have a great day and I'll see you again. Bye!